Hey guys, Motor Car Nut here. Today we're going to be removing the cylinder head on, it can be from a two, uh, 1990 to 2002 Saturn 1.9 liter. This happens to be the double overhead cam motor. The single overhead cam is a little bit different. Um, so we're focusing on the double overhead cam engine. You want to stick around. I'm going to show you, I'm going to do it in step by step. I'm going to show you how to take some of the plastics off the air cleaner. Then we're going to go to exhaust, then we're going to go to intake manifold, then we're going to go to timing cover, and everything to get the head off. All right, if you go, I have a video on this car. This car has a mechanical uh, misfire. You can watch that video on what exactly that is. Um, but basically, uh, the engine has to be inspected, it has to be, you have to take uh, the cylinder heads off minimum to see what's going on in there. Okay, first thing you're going to want to do is drain the coolant from the radiator. Open up the overflow so you get better suction and uh, the engine oil as well. Right here, take the cap off, go underneath the oil pan, drain it into a proper container. And on the radiator on the bottom, you're going to see a little hole. When I lift the car up, I'll show you that there's going to be a little hole, and you're going to put a quarter inch drive, a uh, quarter inch drive ratchet in there. If it's like a square drive, and you just turn it. And you drain the uh, coolant out that way. Okay, I already did that. And the next step is going to take off the uh, air cleaner. It's just you got four of these. You take them off. And over there, you have a screw clamp. Take the screw clamp off. Take it off from here. And we'll take that out of the way. And this little uh, resonator that hooks to the air cleaner, the little push pin is in here. We take that out of the way. We're going to take that away. We're going to continue. Okay, now after you get those things off, you're going to take the, um, the, the lower half of the uh, air box out, 10 millimeter down over there, and one there, and one there. Take this out of the way. There's a little, um, let me see over here. I believe this one, oh yeah, it has like a, um, an air temperature sensor right there. Disconnect that. Okay, then you go over to this side. You got 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. All right, this comes off. Okay, disconnect it from here. All right, and disconnect it from the air pump over here. So you can take this part off. So we're gonna take this part off and we're gonna take this off and um, just pop the spark plugs out of the way, keep them off to the side. When you take it off the valve over here, just be careful there's a gasket here. How this goes is this goes flush against this bracket, like this. Let me show you. This goes flush against the bracket and the gasket goes in between this and the housing. See the gasket right here? And the same thing over here. All right, there's a gasket that goes between the manifold, exhaust manifold, and the pipe. Then we take off the next, the um, radi radiator hose, the upper radiator hose from here and here. Get the hose out of the way. Um, 10 millimeter here and on the back for the EGR valve, take the um, Fire harness off here, take the, the valve out of the way. There's going to be a gasket under there. Hopefully it's not ripped. Okay, then we're going to come to this side. And we're going to loosen the tension on the uh, serpentine belt. And we're going to take the AC compressor off. You got one, two, and one underneath is three. These are 10 millimeter. I believe this is a 13. Then another 10, 10, and I think there's a 13 underneath there. And the thing with this, we're gonna take the whole um, AC compressor and fold it over here, being, being careful not to break anything. You don't have to relieve the pressure, okay? I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna continue. Um, I didn't take the um, AC off yet, but I wanted to tell you that you could, over here, there's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt. You, t you take that out, that releases this, okay? Down here, you want to release the hose off the lower, right here. So, this can swing up, and you can pop 
it and you move it out of the way so it clears for this part over here clears the um, transmission line over here and then once you lift it up far enough just wait, before you do that you got the O2 sensor right here for this one and then lift it up a little bit once you lift this up high enough you can get the um, radiator connector off and there's going to be these little uh, fasteners right here wrapped around it basically and then you take the radiator out and we continue let me show you once you move it up like this you just get a screwdriver in here like this and just basically release these tabs see and there's the plug right there you take that plug out and there's another another tab over there you release that and you take it all out of the way so you have a little bit more room now i'm on the bottom on the side of the car on the bottom there's going to be take the wheel off 19 millimeters the wheel comes off uh you're going to have a plastic a plastic cover here it's going to have a push pin here over here and on the other side over here it's going to have one here and it's like a little tab that goes under here and over here, under here. Basically, just pull them both out until you get them both out. And then once you, you'll, you'll be in this position right here, once you have that out, and now what you're going to want to do is, because the, the mount is still on, on the top, you're going to take these, I think they're 13s or 14s, 1, 2, 3, 4, and this like little dog bone. This one here and this one here, and this whole metal bracket thing can come off. Then you're gonna wanna get up in here, right here, you put a wrench on the, uh, I don't know what that is, a, a 16 or a 17, and you do it counterclockwise, clockwise actually, to relieve the, uh, the pressure on the serpentine belt, so you can take that off. And what I was talking about the radiator before, it's right here, see the little thing right there? And then there's where you put the, uh, right in that little white area, you put, it's a square, a quarter inch square, you put a, um, a ratchet in there, a quarter inch ratchet, and open it up and drain it out. Okay. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to do what I said. And when you take this bolt off, because you got to take this bolt off too, because the front cover has to come off. The timing cover. So that's why you got to do all of this. Uh, so after this, I'm going to go back up top. So when you're taking the compressor out, you have 13 millimeter, 10, 10, and over here is going to be a 13 millimeter. Where it goes, one, the 13 goes here, here, and then there. And then the three tens are one here, two, and three that go in the back here. One, two, and three on the other side over there, right there. Okay, so then what you do with this, you just be careful, because it's made to slide out of the way. Okay, you just slide it. Just make sure you don't kink anything, don't scratch anything. Maybe you put something down over there. Keep it out of the way, even when you close the hood on it, it'll be okay. So that gives you access, because you gotta take this bracket off to get the exhaust manifold off. Okay. And also, um, now this bracket doesn't have to come off. Um, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this bracket off, then go underneath over here on the flange. I believe that 13 millimeter, there's three of them to take the flange off, the exhaust right here. So that goes down. And then I'm gonna take the uh, exhaust manifold off and actually I'm gonna peek at the valves and see if the valves are burnt on that number four one that number four cylinder that was causing the misfire. So I took off the exhaust manifold and I really can't see in there. All I know it's very, very carbon and oil buildup in there. And over here you see you see over here? It's supposed to have a hole here on each one. They're all clogged up. All right, that's for emissions that blows the cool air, uh, uh, blows uh, uh, air inside there for emission purposes. They're all clogged up. That means that the air pump that's here that was connected to that little valve I told you to take off first, that goes to, that goes to right here. Okay, so we flip this around 
and I mean this is not so bad it's all cruddy I mean it, you know they didn't replace the oil on time but it's, sometimes these are all blocked but anyhow you see look over here it's blocked over here but it's still the air can go through but it definitely cannot go through over here like you see over here yes it can go through here but look at this nothing 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 so anyway i'm gonna continue now um we're gonna tackle maybe i'm gonna loosen the mount now take the mount off put a jack underneath so i can slide the engine a little bit over and I'm going to take off the power steering pump. Like I said, I take off the mount and the power steering pump. I'm going to put it on a jack so I can slide it a little bit more. And then we'll take it from there. Okay, another key area, uh, common failures on these cars, is the intake manifold. The ones with the plastic intake manifold, the newer ones, that, well, from like 2000 up. You see this little, this, this little spout here? This is where coolant goes in. Sometimes these break off. And the... the, the the heater hose right here, see this, this one right here, it hooks up to this this uh, plastic hose right here, they split. And when that does, sometimes they have like a little, you can uh, buy an aftermarket um, uh, uh, tube that you would have to cut this out and just put that tube in, but you know what, it's just better off to find a used good manifold maybe. I think you'll be better that way. So it's just a note. Yeah, if you see coolant leaking and you don't know where it's coming from, it could be from here, broken. Usually they break off this one, seems all right, but there was a leak somewhere, so I don't know what's leaking. Or maybe this has a split on the bottom, the heater hole, the heater, where the heater hose hooks up to this, this uh, pipe right here, the plastic pipe, that's all connected to the uh, intake manifold. Uh, just a heads up on that. And when you remove the power steering pump, it's good to remove this bracket. They're all 10 millimeters. This one holds the power steering pump. You take it out of the way. And you get you get most of the bolts um, through here. You, you feel for them in the holes over here. One here, one will be there on the, on the bottom. And then you move it out of the way so you have room because you have to disconnect this wire harness. Or maybe not. Maybe you could just move it out of the way. Maybe you don't have to disconnect it from the um, power steering reservoir. Or I believe it goes down to a sensor down there. This harness right here. See this part? So maybe you could just move it out of the way. Okay, you take the fuel injectors off. You just squeeze these clips and it pops right out. And in, in here, in the back of that, you see this over here? It has two little tabs on both sides. You squeeze them in and then push it out. And then you can just, you can just take this right off. Okay, you take your connectors off. And the, um, you could relieve the pressure, but you know, with a screwdriver over here, but there's not that much that's gonna come out. And basically it's a little fitting on both sides. You squeeze it and it pops up. I'll show you that. And you pull it out, you see over here, you see these two tabs on both sides? You squeeze them in so you can pull it out. And then this just wraps around here and it goes right in here. See the little slit? You just take that out and this moves and you get this out of the way. Okay. And take the PVC out, the pipe, and you see over here, You just squeeze both sides and it pops out. You see, it's not that much. No, not that much. You see these little tabs? There's a tab on this side and tab on that side, and it just you just squeeze them in like this, and you lift this part out. And this part pops right up. I take this 10 millimeter off and let's move things to the side. So once you get everything out. It's still, you see this wire right here? 
I it's hooked up to a sensor and we gotta go and delete and take that off so we could just move the harness out of the way. Over here, looks like a 13 millimeter. See that, or a 13 or a 14. Gotta take that out for the EGR. Okay, disconnect the heater core hose over here. Okay, and then, you know, just move everything out of the way. What I did, I see, I, I just put it all here. Just trying to get everything out of the way so you can get to the bolts to get it off. All right. You just take these off the, um, the studs right here, this little vacuum line, and it goes down here. You just pull it off, and this, and this whole thing comes right off. Then you got the PVC, like I said before. Same thing, it goes into a spout right there. You just take this off, take it out of the way. Okay, now I wanna note that um, I'm taking a lot of things off. Sometimes, you know, some guys may feel like they can do it, you know, a little faster by not moving everything. Like for instance, the uh, exhaust manifold, you could just, you know, keep it hooked up down there and just move it out. That's fine. But I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. If somebody wants to take off the manifold, if somebody wants to take off the intake manifold, so you can cut corners wherever you want. You know, I'm just doing it like this for people that never did it before. Or they're you know a little nervous how to do it, and I'm just walking everybody through it. So while we're up here, what I'm gonna do before I go down and remove that uh, that sensor wire, you probably don't have to touch these over here. Once this one's out of the way, you can just swing this in the back. All right, I'm gonna take off the intake manifold bolts, as many as I can get from here. I'm gonna take off the, um, the valve cover. All right, take that off, and then I'm gonna go down and release that, uh, that sensor wire. Okay, so basically it's all 10 millimeter deep socket. Okay, you have them in here and on the perimeter. And you just take it off. Now right here is the chain. And the reason why this is a little bit more involved than like a timing belt motor, a timing belt motor, you would just take the timing belt off and you wouldn't have, there's no side cover. So this one, we have to take the side cover off because it's a timing chain, it's submerged in oil. So it's a little bit more involved. But, um, okay, so I'm going to just take the uh, bolts off the intake manifold and like I said, get that sensor wire on the bottom. Once you get this, this one out of, um, take this 13 millimeter bolt, you push this out of the way, and you can get to the bottom um, manifold bolt that was hiding behind this. See, now she's all loose. And what I'm gonna try to do is see if she moves out away and leave it there. So when I take the head off, I can, I could, um, I can leave this in, but I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see because some people want to, how to remove the manifold by itself without moving the head. So I may do that. All right, there's the clip. There's the, uh, the sensor wire. You take that one off for the one that was on the top. And now there's gonna be a hose right here you wanna take off. And you're gonna see there's a little tube right here. You see right here, see this one right here? On the top, you can just take it out. It's a vacuum line, all right? And that should release the um, intake manifold but I'll make sure. We're on the top again. Yeah, that's the vacuum line on the bottom I told you about. It's this one right here. Just push that out. And instead of releasing the um, that big hose on the bottom, that goes actually up right here to the, um, the um, brake booster. You just pop it out here like that. And then it's easier just to put this in rather than going down on the bottom and playing around with that clamp. All right, now let's see if she comes out. Okay, so basically it won't come out it's hitting the firewall. So what you're gonna have to do is jack the engine up and take the engine mount off and then we can slide slide the um, engine forward a little bit. All right, like I told you before, you should have had that, that little dog bone on the bottom, that, um, that um, mount, that should be off already. Here's another tip, another known problem with these cars is this upper, upper mount. So if you put your, your uh, car in, in drive and it shakes the whole dash, um, it's probably this mount and this one this car has low miles, but it's old You see that? It's no good So I gotta replace it. Okay, so now once we do this 
then the engine can be just slid over enough, make sure this is not in the way, and it can be slid over, maybe with a little piece of wood to get the intake manifold off. Okay, so what I did is I got like a little, a little uh, tie, a ratchet tie, and I just pushed it enough that I can get, to get, get it out. So if, if you're doing a, you know, a, a manifold replacement because it got cracked because of the coolant or you want to replace the, the uh, manifold gasket, that's how you do that. All right, so it's fully out now, see? Comes right out, all right? Okay, so if you want to get an idea of what it looks back there, um, and you see the reason why you have to move it because these, these uh, studs are so long that it doesn't clear, it hits the back of the wall. There's a starter there. There was obviously some kind of a leak here. I don't know if it was the, um, the gasket, the intake manifold gasket uh, leaking where the coolant passages go. But that was just uh, one of the problems. All right, so you get an idea what's here. And this is the, um, the wire I took out from bottom. And it goes right here. And yeah, it's still hooked up over here, so you really don't have to do anything. You see? So now I'm going to release this. And the next thing we have to do, the last thing, is take the, um, I believe we've got to take the, uh, the pulley off the water pump to get to the um, bolts on the uh, timing cover. And you got to take off the, um, the idler pulley. And after that, we're going to take the cover off. And then... We're gonna make sure that, well, before we do, yeah. And after that, we're gonna check the timing. See, I'm gonna to touch the time, make sure the timing is correct before you take it apart so you know how to put it back together. You mark it yourself. I took the idler pulley that was up there at this 14 millimeter. Now you take, okay. Now you take, um, there's two 10 millimeters for the um, serpentine tensioner. And that comes right out. Okay, there's one bolt up there and one over here. Take that to the side. That's a 21 millimeter. Make sure you drain the, uh, the oil because the oil will come out of that. Gotta take that off too. And I don't believe that that pulley's pressed on. But once you get that center bolt off, it, it is not pressed on and like they just come right off. It's a good, good idea to replace that seal if that's what you're doing. Um, and what I was saying before about the, um, the water pump, I guess when you put the uh, cover back on, it may interfere here. So it's just a good idea. Get these bolts, there's four of them. Four of them, yeah, four 10 millimeter. Just to take the uh, pulley off. And then start taking all your bolts off. Note that you have thinner ones in the middle over here. This is eight millimeter. Then you got tens, you got on the bottom too. Okay, I still have the, um, the uh, mount on temporarily, so it just keeps it up a little bit. But even if without the mount on, if it tilts down, you could probably still get to them. So I'm gonna take those off and take them from there. We're getting ready to take the uh, front cover off. Quick note over here, right around here. If you look over here, you can see that bolt hole. Don't forget that bolt. It's, it's right in here. Okay, besides the perimeter, all the 10 millimeter perimeters, and there's an eight millimeter that goes right here. Right there, and another one, so to speak, hidden over here. All right, now we're gonna pry the cover a little bit and take it off. Took the cover off. Now, it's gonna be a good idea. I took it off without taking the uh, water pump off, but I think it's gonna be a good idea you take the water pump uh, pulley and the water pump off. The reason for that is once you, hit, once you put the, uh, uh, this timing cover back, all right, it's gonna have uh, silicone on it, and it's just basically, it's gonna smear all over the place. So if you keep it, if you take this off, you can push it down this way and slide it over and put it on. The way it is right now, it's not gonna go in because it's gonna hit down here. So that's how I took it out. Actually, I took it out, it came out from the bottom. So it's, I remember doing this plenty of times and that's why I took the water pump off. That's why I said it in the beginning. I didn't know why, I forgot. And then when you put the cover back on, the cover goes back on like this. 
this is the oil pump in here. You see this? It has flat, flat spot here and here. That's going to coincide with the flat spot that's on the um, uh, crank right here and here. So when you slide it on, you have to make sure the flat spots slide right on. That's the water, that's the um, oil pump. Pumps the oil through here and here. There's O-rings that go here. They're, they're over here. One's there and one is over there. Okay, so I'm gonna line up the marks and show you what the marks look like. So now, here's the timing marks, okay? You see the, um, the crank? It's got that round dot, and you see the line on the casting on the, on the block? That line, see, that's top dead center, okay? There's your chain tensioner. That's top end set on the crank. Okay. And on the top, you're gonna have a dot right there. And also a dot right there. Now, when you put a new chain on, it's gonna have a different color link. So the different color link is gonna match up. The different color link is gonna match up with the dot. Same as over here, different color links gonna match up with the dot, and the same thing on the bottom. Now, if you're using the uh, a new ch uh, the same chain, all you do, and come over here, oh, sorry, is the, all you do is you look for your dot, it's right here, you highlight it, and then highlight the link. And do the same thing over here. Highlight the dot. And then highlight the link. Okay, and you do the same thing on the bottom. And when you take the chain off, just take the chain off, make sure it's in the same, well obviously the marker's gonna be in the front and the rotation's gonna be clockwise. Okay? And it's always a good idea, especially when an engine doesn't run right or whatever, it's always good to see if the timing was good in the beginning. You know, because it's always it just it just makes sense, right? So let's say if you you take it like this one, the timing's fine. It has a misfire because it's a mechanical misfire as far as something's wrong with the uh, the valve system over there, or the valves or the piston or whatever. But at least I know, okay, my timing is right. The timing of the valves and the crankshaft and the pit, everything is is fine. So it's not that problem, and it's just a good reference point. Okay, now you can take off the tensioner. So, took off the, um, everything the way we're supposed to, the, um, the guides, the chain, and tensioner, and you keep it exactly how you're going to want to put it by, especially if you're reusing it, okay? And you mark the, uh, exhaust cams, that's exhaust, that's intake, okay? So when you take everything off, put it on a nice clean, um, surface, exactly the way, and mark front. So the front of the engine, you know, this is the front of the engine. Okay, you mark all your cams, all your all, all your lifters and everything, and make sure they all go back in the same spot because that's very important. Uh, everything wears a certain way on each individual cylinder. That's normal, but you don't want to switch them around. See, take everything off, and you put it as if it was right on the end, and this is the front of the engine, and everything. You got your lifters, you got your caps, you got your uh, camshafts, Everything in order, don't bump into it. And now we're ready to take the head off. Okay, it's gonna be what? Two, four, six, eight, ten head bolts. I'll pull it off. Okay, so you got 10, 13 millimeter bolts. You take them off. And now we're gonna inspect it together. All right, I just took it off. I didn't turn it over. We're gonna see. Right off the bat, I can see pretty much, I mean, this head gasket seen better days but it is not bone you see the cylinders they all look almost different except this one a little bit because if you remember from the other video we have a misfire a mechanical misfire so i don't see anything that's blown you would see black traces coming across or, or just burnt off 
nothing. This is a little bit was going to go, but it didn't. I mean, it's still, even if it was going to go, it, had, it didn't go into the coolant. It didn't go into the um, compression. So that probably was nothing yet. But the head gasket was going to go over here. See? Everything is intact. Okay. Now let's look at the head. Okay, number four cylinder is there. And oh, here I can see. Oh, here we go. Can you spot the problem? Number four is right here. Bam! Look at that hole. Whoa. And if, you, and if you watch the other video, if somebody was just trying to uh, throw parts at it, no part is going to fix that. You have to take that out and do it yourself. Why that happened is another story. But that's it. It's exactly what I thought. A burnt valve or something wrong with the piston rings or whatever, but it, it turned out to be a burnt valve. We're going to take that valve out, check the seat, see if it's okay and um replaced them we know the head is straight it wasn't blown you can see in between there was no jumping through it was all sealed nice each cylinder so that's what it was guys all right so stick around after i um uh, uh mill the head and do all of that stuff clean everything up i'm going to start putting it back together Okay, now we're in the, uh, the assembly process. And what you want to do is make sure the head gasket surface is completely clean as long as, as well as the uh, timing cover areas over here. What I like to do is I like to use a nice sharp brand new razor, maybe three or four brand new razors on, on the surface because they dull really quick. And what you do is you hold it, you hold it this way, not this way, this way. And you scrape, you hold it 90 degrees to it, and you scrape all around. Now, don't dig into it, don't gouge it, just go like this. All the way around, clean it with some carburetor cleaner and a rag, blow it out with, if you have compressed air or just with the rag, and make sure that it's completely flat. Let me show you the, uh, I did the same thing with the head surfaces over here. Just come up over here. And go nice and flat. Clean it up with a carburetor cleaner and some uh, regs and make sure it's completely clean. All right? And what I did is, if you remember, I took the uh, intake manifold off first before I took the head off. But what I'm gonna do right now, it's easier to, you put a brand new gasket, you put, you put it on as 13 millimeter bolts. I think there's seven of them. And plus this one here for the EGR. All uh, right, you tighten them all down, and this way it's on here already. You see? It doesn't really affect nothing. Then when you put it in, right, make sure the motor is, is, is most, most to the front as it can be. And basically back here, all you're going to, you know, once you sit it down, the only thing you got to do is you got to snake this one, the long one over here that goes to the sensor down here. Let me see. That sensor right there. Is this the only one that got to get snaked through the intake manifold? And then there's going to be a, a, a vacuum line that goes over. All right, let me show you on the other side. A vacuum line that goes. Uh, my, my light is, is interfering. Right, you can see it better here. See this one right here? The, the vacuum line goes on here. You just slip it right on over here. This one right here. All right? And that line is this line. You see this one? That goes there. Everything else underneath, there's nothing, nothing, nothing going on here. There was a brace that goes from here to the block. It was missing, and I don't have one. But if you have that brace, you keep it on here. It's good. It lessens the vibration, the chances of these bolts getting loose. Somebody took it off. I guess somebody did something. I don't know. And um, and that's and and that's good. And that's it over there. You see. 
Um, I took this off. I took the throttle body off. I have a video on how to clean the throttle body. Nice and clean in there. It doesn't stick. It doesn't bind. All right. I checked. I cleaned out all the fuel injectors. All right. Put new seals. And like I said, it goes right on. There's nothing on the only this line you have to worry about. So no sense putting the head on and then, you know, trying to push the engine all the way forward to slide the uh, intake manifold in. Unless that's the only thing you're doing. Then you do it the way I showed you how to do it when, when I took it off. All right, so right now, and then here's the fresh hair gasket. Always new, use a brand new one and always put it on the proper way. You know, it says, usually says which side is up. If it doesn't say which side is up, um, you look at the old one when you took it off and you put it on the same way. Okay, usually it has a symbol or some, even if it has the name of the, the brand name, if it, the brand name is on the top, that's usually the top. All right, I'm going to put that on. And put the head on, and I'm going um, to take it from there. Let me explain something. Now, you see, it looks like it can go this way, right? But no, you got to look. Look, see how it doesn't line up? And also, you have dowels here. You see the dowels? So, this gasket, you turn it around like this. All right, you make sure that the dowel will slide in there. And this one over here. And then make sure all your all your holes line up. Everything looks normal, like when you took the other one off. Now uh, it's a good, you want to use new head bolts. You have to oil the head bolts, oil the um, washers on the head bolts. Okay, you put them in the cylinders, and I mark them over here, so you can see this is one, this is two, this is four. I'm sorry, the sequence that you tighten them is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. That's the sequence of talk talking them. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten the bolts in sequence to 35 pounds. Then you're gonna take them all out and oil them again, or oil them, yeah, oil them again. Not so much, just a light coating of oil. And then you're ready to torque them. So now you're going to torque them in the same sequence, starting with number one to 22 foot pounds. Use a torque wrench, okay? 22 foot pounds. You do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. 22 pounds. Then you go do it again from number one, 37 pounds. You do that in the same sequence to tighten it. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn each one in sequence again another 90 degrees. Now, if you don't have an angle torque wrench, you could just basically use... Um, let me show you. Let me take this off. Sorry about that. Is put it back in here, use a regular... Um, half inch and you see this that's from there 90 degrees is a quarter turn so what you do like I just showed you is you line up you line it up like this nice and you know straight and then you just tighten it till it's like that so basically that's 90, one quarter turn is 90. Then you do number two, the same way, and the whole sequence again, and then your torque is complete. So then you get your wires. See the one that goes to the sensor? You put it down here, and you get that down there. You put your injectors on. You have three plugs here, throttle body, air valve, and another connected down here. There's one, two, and three, okay? Make sure nothing is snagging, nothing is uh, binding anywhere. Then you come over to this side. And then you put the vacuum line, see it right here? What I was talking about before, this goes to the intake. Right there, you put that line on there. All right, you put your uh, heater hose right here on. And don't forget to plug this into the uh, brake booster. That's the vacuum line. And make sure that this thing slides in here. You see this little, like that. And slide there like that, because then you're gonna get the fuel. The fuel lines are gonna go there. Okay. 
And let me just button it up a little bit more and show you what I did. I put this back in on the uh, brake booster, tighten the clamp on the um, heater hose, put the um, fuel pressure, I mean the, uh, the fuel um, hose, and tighten the 10 millimeter down over here, put it in that where that long screw was. Okay, tightened over here. This goes to the coolant, the coolant reservoir, nice and tight. Um, what else? Over here, is, that's about it over there. See, it's so much easier to put it back when you have the um, intake already mounted to the head, because now you don't have to, you know, play around with the bolts. And over here, you put this in, this has a, a seal in here. All right, it seals in here. And you see this thing, it has to line up like this lines up with this and it clicks in and make sure you can't pull it out all right it's very important that's fuel okay so that's done as far as that what i like to do sometimes i like to work on that area and then come forward you know so what i'm going to do after this is i'm going to um uh let me see i'll put the uh, egr valve on Make sure you use a new gasket. It's, it's right here, EGO with two 10 millimeters. And um, another thing is there's a little coolant temperature sensor here. Let me get it on the other side. All right, it's right here, this one. When you take it off or put it on, make sure that the two little contacts in there are clean. These things are known to rot out and they cause a lot of problems. They cause uh, misfires, they cause uh, just a lot of drivability problems. So make sure that when you take the uh, sensor off that the two prongs inside are not green and make sure they're nice and clean and um, before, you put it, before you put it back on. So I put the exhaust manifold on, you use a new gasket, I put the uh, exhaust flange down there on, also a new gasket. Those are three uh, 13s, and these are all 13s. Okay, I button that up. I put the EGR back on there, new gasket, two 10 millimeters over there. Put the throttle, uh, throttle link back on, uh, the throttle cable, I'm sorry. It's not in the way when you put the uh, valve cover, so. And you put it, you put, put it in a little circle here, and then you put the uh, cable through here. So it ends up looking like this. All right, and this just clips in. Make sure it doesn't pull out. Like I said, that's easy just to put the cover right on there. Okay, so I think I'm pretty much done over here for the, for the time being. Now I'm gonna work on um, making sure that the whole area over here is nice and clean. Okay, and you know, with the razor, and make sure it's nice and dry. And then I'm gonna take the, um, Right now what I'm gonna do, see, I clean this, all the, all the uh, surfaces over there, and I'm gonna replace the seal. It's a good idea just to place, replace the seal. Um, I gotta clean up the bench over here. Um, let me see, if you got a seal removed like this, all right, you just put it in here. Just yank it, I can't do it by my head, <laughs> with one hand. And basically yank it and it pops the seal out. And we got the fresh seal right here. Now, before you take it out, you know, know if it's flush, See, this one's flush against the casting, nice and the seal goes in and flush. Sometimes they're a little bit past it. You wanna make sure, cause you don't want the seal rubbing on the crank or something internally or the water oil pump. So that's a good note. You see how it's nice and flush with this? That's how you put the new seal, the same way, nice and flush. I'm gonna do that and we're gonna continue. So make sure when you put in the lifters over here, you oil them, oil the bores, then you put them in. And then you oil the tops of them, or, or assembly lube is better, it's, it's more sticky. And here, here, on this side, and then you put the rollers. See, here's the lifter here, valve. You put the rollers like this. Make sure they're seating in here. They're not off to the, 
Make sure it's not off to the side like this. It's sitting on top of the valve stem, right? Then you put our lubrication oil here on all the journals. Then you put the cams back. And then you put the caps on and you loop the caps. And then we're gonna talk them down. I'll give you the specs. See, it's good to use the assembly lube, like from Permatex. You just put it on there and it really sticks on there. You rub it in there. And it gives a nice, you know, because as soon as you start the engine, the oil has to pump all the way up to the top, and that, those, that split seconds can score something. That's why you always got to loop this up. Okay, now I'm going to put that one in. Okay, and you talk the bearing caps. Uh, you, you work your way in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. Or well, ten. You work from here out. Okay, and you talk them to. Uh, 100 inch, inch pounds, okay, not foot pounds, obviously. 100 inch pounds, you torque them all down. And now, we're gonna um, put the uh, chain on. So, after you uh, line up the, um, the time again, see, like when we took them off, everything's lined up here and here, and on the bottom. I uh, put the timing cover on, I did not move the, um, I didn't have to take off the water pump. What I did is I put the caulking on the cover itself and made the engine pretty much level and and slowly, did, diligently put it, make sure that the uh, caulking, the uh, silicone I mean, doesn't rub on anything. And you put it in, you like you hang it on the top, then you go on the bottom and you align on the bottom. You have to align the oil pump with the crank so you can slide the uh the rest of the timing cover on um let me show you over here if you can see it all right you see, see over there now before you can put it all the way on you have to um align flat there's a flat spot on the oil pump on both sides and when the crank is at top dead center it's going to be flat left to right so you just slide it on that way and then you can tighten down all the bolts. Don't forget the ones in the middle. Okay, now I'm gonna put on the idler right here that goes there and the tensioner, which goes there. Uh, actually, it goes where that hole is in there. Then I'm gonna I'll put the bracket on for the um, power steering pump. Then I'm gonna connect the power steering pump and we'll take it from there. So now, we got the uh, bracket on for the power steering pump, put the power steering pump on, the idler putty, pulley um, down there, I mean here, and then the tensioner. Now, you put this bracket on, that you took off, it's four 10 millimeters, that's for the uh, AC. We're gonna put the AC on, the, the uh, compressor. And then um, right from there, we're gonna put the serpentine belt on uh, to do it without the mount on, it's easier. And then I'm gonna put the mount on and then take it from there. Now, when you put the, uh, the crank pulley on, right, clean up the bearing surfaces uh, of the, where the, where the, um, where the uh, seal rides, I mean, the seal surface. Clean it up with emery cloth or something like that, clean it, and then put a little oil on it before you slide it in uh, so it makes a good uh, a seal and it doesn't leak, okay? And then you torque that bolt down, 100 and, 160 pounds. All right, then you put, what I do is I put the belt on, you follow this diagram, you see? I put it on everything except the top over here. Then I use the, um, the wrench and then I tilt it this way and then I slide it on the pulley. Right here, the idler pulley. You see how it won't go? Not yet. So you just take a wrench, put it on there, go clockwise, and it'll slide right on. Then you put the mount on. Put the mount on. Make sure you don't forget the ground strap. It's important. Make sure it's in good condition. Okay, now, uh, go put the valve cover on. Go first, uh, put a new seal on the cover. Put the valve cover on. Like I said, you're gonna put a new gasket on the inside where the spark plug holes are and on the perimeter. Okay, then you put the vacuum lines back where they go. 
over here, it comes all the way around here and gets plugged in right down there. PCV right here and it, it goes down in here. You'll see the, the, uh, the, um, the port right there. Okay, I'm gonna put the spark plugs in, then I'm gonna put the uh, spark plug wires in. Then we're gonna do the uh, fin. Just slides right in, has one screw over there. I believe it's like one screw over there. So before you uh, uh, hook up the bottom radiator hose, make sure you put the radiator shroud in there because the little uh, notch on the bottom will hit. So it's easy to do that before you put the uh, bottom hose on. And there's gonna be one screw. See right here, that's one screw. And make sure it slides in on the bottom. It has a, a catch so it doesn't flop, you know, flip around. Okay, you put the plug in right here, you wrap it around, it has a little um, wire, um, little, uh, whatchamacallit, things to keep it in place. Don't forget the, um, the old two sensor right here. See that? Make sure that's in place. Then you got um, the spark plugs on the coils. It's four, one, two, three. So four goes right here, one, then two, then three. That's your firing order, simple. Okay, so now just gonna put the air cleaner on. Uh, yeah, just gonna put the air cleaner on. Watch out for the, um, the air temperature. Um, Harness, make sure that gets plugged into the sensor. Now we're gonna take it from there, we're almost ready to go, fire it up. I put on the air cleaner, simple, you got three bolts, one down here, 10 millimeter, and uh, 10 and 10. That's the bottom half, you put your filter in there, clean filter. All right, you button it up over there, you put your hose here, and you put this thing on, it just slides in. There's a hole in the air filter, it goes just slides in there. And you put the little plastic uh, fastener here. And what else did I do? Um, I think that's it. Well, I'm gonna go on the bottom. I'm gonna put the bracket. This bracket, I didn't put that bracket yet on the bottom. I'm gonna do that. Um, but I pretty much think the top is done. Um, just make sure your uh, hoses are tight. And um, I'm gonna go put that bracket on now. Okay. When you put the bottom bracket in, you put the uh, bottom mount in first. Uh, see the mount? You put the mount in first, and you keep everything loose. See, everything is still loose. So you put the mount in first, and then you put the uh, bracket on right over. You push this down, you put it right over. Everything works. Everything fits with the mount on, on the top, so you don't have to worry. Hand tighten everything, and then you, you, uh, you uh, tighten it all up. It's a good idea to uh, re-drain the oil. You should have drained the oil in the beginning, but just when you take the head off, a little water can seep in down in the oil patches into the uh, oil pan, like this. Now that's still oil, but it's good to drain it out, let it stop so it, you know you have a good start. You don't want to mix any kind of coolant with oil. Put oil in the engine, make sure it's at the full mark, and you keep doing the coolant a couple of times until you get it right. You see where this cross hatch is? That the water's on both sides just, just above it, okay? And once it's like that, then, you know, after a couple of times, it's, go, it's gonna keep going down and settling. Once you get it like this, that's good enough to start it, bring it up to operating temperature, then shut it off, let it cool down, and then you check it again, all right? Now, when you put the negative battery terminal back on, you turn the key on until you hear the pump. Turn the key off. Turn the key on until you hear the pump. Do that three times before you start it. All right, that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, I just started it. Just to tell you that I just started it, I can put my hand right on the exhaust manifold, okay? So I just started it. Okay, now, what you wanna do is you wanna look for, you wanna bring it up to operating temperature, you want the fan to cycle at least twice, all right? You may hear the, the valves a little bit, you know, all into the oil works its way through. Let it idle, don't raise the RPM too much. Okay, now I, I kept the plastics off, the ones that go over here, because I wanna make sure the seal's not leaking, I'm checking my work. 
making sure everything I do is okay before I put it everything back. Well, if you follow the other video on uh, Don't Be a Parts Changer and the other one about diagnosing a miss, this one had a miss on the number four cylinder with a burn valve. Now, you see it, you see my hand. Running pretty good. I had a little bit of the valve train, but that's normal. You know, you rev it up. You know what you can do too? Once, it, once it's warm, you can start it up, and as soon as it starts, shut it off. Start it up, as soon as it starts, shut it off. Do that three times, and what that does, it's, it's forcing the, uh, the um, oil pressure into the uh, lifters and into the, uh, um, uh, what's it called, the uh, timing chain, tensioner, and all that good stuff. But this one looks good so far. I'm gonna, like I said, bring it up to operating temperature, check underneath, make sure there's no leaks. Oh, go, okay, so I, I uh, had it running a uh, good 20 minutes. I checked over here, all, all in there, everything's good, no leaks or nothing. The only problem, and it wasn't what I did, is over here, now that we're near the radiator, you see right there, you see it leaking over here? Now you see this? This line? This line is for the um, transmission cooler. These are known to leak. They crack, the radiators crack. So if you have a Saturn, first thing you do is open the, open the hood, look down here. You see, you'll see your transmission line going in and look right down there. You see water because this, this uh, the plastic um, tanks over here, they crack right below that. And sure enough, this one is cracked. It wasn't leaking when, I don't know if it was leaking when I got the car. Uh, but being that the car is running nice now, it's running right, it has the proper pressure, it's not misfiring, it has this leak. So needless to say, I have to replace the um, radiator. But see, that's just a good point of what I'm trying to say. Um, hold on a second. I bet it was cloudy. Um, what I'm trying to say is that's why you always check things before you, you put the car on the road. And uh, um, that was nothing I did, but you know, I mean, it doesn't matter, right? It really doesn't matter. It's leaking, so it has to be replaced. So I'm gonna uh, make a video on how to replace that. But the head gasket, top to bottom, is complete. All you gotta do is you put your, your plastics back on. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to do that. Even I'm gonna put the wheel back on, and then we'll uh, close out the video. Okay. So this plastic piece, you see this? This goes in here. It's a little hard to do with one hand. This goes in back of here. All right, this little thing has a, it has a little pin in here. That pushes in there. You see what I was talking about before, when we first started the video? This goes in here, like that. And then you have another push pin that goes here. And then this part is done. All right. And then the second one, the second one goes in, you see this? It goes in just like this. In here, goes in here, that thing goes up in there. I can't do it with my hand. Let me put it in and I'll show you what it looks like. This thing goes in here like this. this thing, the other way, this little tab goes in here. And then you put a little push pin right in here. And that takes care of that. You put the wheel back on and you're done. Unfortunately, like I said, this has another problem, but that's in another video. Motor car nut, please subscribe, hit the like button. Any questions, leave them below. Uh, check out all my other videos on cost saving tips, save you thousands of dollars, even more. You do it yourself, you're proud, it's done right, and that's it. See you guys in the next video. I really appreciate you, all you guys' comments, watching, subscribers, and everything like that. Thank you. Bye.